let's keep on adding some functionality to our prime material, our parent material of all our instances. In the previous video, we made the parent material here have the ability to swap out all of the different texture channels, a different color, a different normal map, a different roughness map, etc. So we can just drop in materials from anywhere that we want to change them to. But let's get some more functionality. We already have a little bit over here in our prime material. I have it docked up over here, otherwise double click it double click on it in your content browser. But I've got this little setup here already that we added way back when we made the original plate material a few videos back. So to get a texture coordinate, remember you wanna hold the U key, U for UV map, right? U key down and click, that's gonna get a texture coordinate, a scalar parameter, we'll talk more about that in a second. Multiply is an M, holding that down. I'm gonna delete those because those are just extras. And also to get a texture sample, hold the T key down, and that's gonna give you a texture sample. So that's how we got these in here already. And of course you're always look up. If you can't remember those, you can just right click on a blank spot and just type in what you're looking for from the search menu and find it that way. But the uh, the keyboard shortcuts are very useful for things that you're going to all the time. So we already have the ability to change how big this is on here, but I'd like to see if we could change the offset of this as well. So is there a way we can go in and change it so that we can slide this material around on the surface. So I'm gonna grab this guy and I'm just gonna pull these back a little bit to give us a little bit more room. I'm actually gonna take this multiply and push it over here. Whoops, I gotta deselect and just grab the multiply and push that back over here because we're gonna put some things in between our texture coordinates over here. So we're just gonna do a little bit of math on here. I'm not gonna make you do the math, just follow along with me. So what we wanna do right now is make another scalar parameter. So I'm actually gonna change the name of this one from scale to texture scale. So I'm just gonna click on here in the parameter name and we'll call this texture scale. So we can, and again, I can get away with spaces in these names of things that I can't get away in various like code things. So it'll let me put a space in there that it wouldn't if I were naming a material or whatever. So texture scale, that just makes it a little bit easier. We've got it defaulted to one. Go back and just double check and make sure that it isn't set to three. If you weren't following along in the last couple of videos, we originally left this as a three at the end of the tutorial, a couple of tutorials back when we made this originally. So just set that default value to, to, uh, to one. You can click on it right over here. Or remember, anytime you select one of these nodes, here you get the same thing down over you can set the default value right there you can also give it a range if you only want it to go a, a minimum of zero and a maximum of 10 or something like that there's no reason to do, to do that right now with the scaling but, but you can kind of clamp it on the two sides just by adding numbers right in through there okay so let's go ahead and add in a couple of more parameters so what we can do is th do this in two ways so if you add a hard number and then you later change your mind you can uh, convert it and I'll show you how to do that right now but you can also just make the scalar from scratch so I'm gonna hold the one key on my keyboard down one exclamation point one uh, above my letters and I'm just gonna click and get this little value so this is just a one vector right a one value and I can type in a number in here except I can't change this if I want to change this number I have to gotta, I've got to go back into the graph and like physically type in here but what I can do is do the same thing we did with all these texture maps I can right click on this and I can say convert to parameter and when I do that it's the same thing as if I just held the S key down and clicked so that creates a scalar parameter right so that's basically just that these are exactly the same in this one's name param and one's name param underscore one because I can't have the same exact name but this is great so we've got two different ways to do this so I'm gonna select this one and I just like to come down I have a hard time changing the name or changing these fields I'd like to use the details panel so I'm gonna just change this parameter our name and I'm going to change this to X offset and we're going to do the same thing down here I'm going to select this I'm going to make this Y offset right so this is going to allow me to individually slide around the scale we can actually do the same thing over here with the texture scale I feel like more often than not you're not wanting to stretch the texture scale you just want to make it bigger or smaller right so we could have actually two parameters over here and make it an X scale and a Y scale, but sometimes that's more trouble than it's worth. So I actually like to, to leave this as one, but know that, know that you could do it uh, with, um, with actually four of these instead of three of these. Okay, the thing that we need to do right now though is we need to add these two together, but adding isn't the right word because we are gonna wanna add words. What we actually wanna do is append these. So if I were to put a default value in here, we don't wanna do this, but if I were to put a default value of one in the X, and one in the Y, and then I used an add node, the result of that would be two. But what we actually wanna do here is what is the X offset and what is the Y offset? We don't wanna add those two together. We want there to be a comma. We want it to be one comma one, right? So I wanna offset it by one in, in the X direction and I wanna offset it by one in the Y direction. 
and keep those as two separate numbers. So what we're looking for for that is append. So I'm gonna right click on here and look for up and it should come in right away. What we're looking for is append vector because we just want two. We just need two. Remember a vector is just like a you know X and a Y. So we just need two of these. So I'm gonna drag this little pin in here over uh, this little node into there and this one into the B. And so I've now got the X and the Y appending. And the result of this is gonna be, right now it's gonna say zero comma zero, right? So by default, we don't want it to be adjusting the texture at all. But if we change this later on, we're gonna to wanna to make this, um, have these two, this, this one is scooched over by one and this one stays zero. So we get one comma zero. Uh, instead of adding them together. But we, now we do need to do an add and we can actually just hold the A key down on our keyboard and click and that's gonna give us an add because it's a common thing. Because what we wanna do is add this appending to our original texture coordinates. So I wanna go over here and break this guy. I'm gonna hit the Alt key and break it right there and put this in between because I want the original texture uh, coordinates and then the appended texture record coordinates down here in the bottom and then I'm gonna wanna plug this guy in at the top. So let me move these around a little bit so this makes a little bit more sense. Uh, maybe I'll put this down over here and we'll do that. There you go, that looks a little, a little clearer there. So what's going on here is that I've got the X and the Y offset being put together. I don't wanna say added, being put together, but now they are being added to the original coordinates. So if the original coordinates are 10, 10, let's just say on here, and then I've said uh, one and one in here, then it's gonna say, all right, 10, 10 is now 11, 11, right? Hopefully that makes some sense. And then I'm gonna multiply that with the scale as I've done before. So now we have the ability to offset this and scale this. So I'm gonna save this and now I'm gonna go back over here to our uh, test uh, and open that up. Remember the test is what's on this cube. We've put the instance, not the parent, but the instance on this cube. And notice we have the ability to change the scale, but also the offset. So if I just check just the X offset and I just slide this around, you can see what it's doing is it's actually offsetting it. It's sliding it around. Maybe I don't want it to be lined up right on the edge. I want it to be yeah, this this uh, top red square to be centered in there. So I've done that. Maybe I like that. I want that to happen in the other direction as well. So now I can offset it so that the little blue square is like right in the middle on each one of the sides. Like that's something that we can now do with this new uh, parameter settings. And I can turn on the texture scale and I can make it much smaller or I can make it much larger. I can do both of those things at the same time. So the next thing I want us to do is to give us the ability to rotate this around. So, so let's open up our prime material again, and let's add the ability to rotate these around. All right, so we need to put the rotator downstream of our multiply. So the thing I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go over here and hit the Alt key, and I'm gonna just break all of these UVs over here, but I'm going to, to show you a nice little trick over here. So I'm gonna just create one of these. I'll just plug one of these into here, and I'm gonna double click onto the, the wire there, onto the little noodle. And what that's gonna do, that's gonna add a little reroute to this. And the way that these are used often is that you just move the little cursor so that it turns into the four-headed arrow. And that just allows, allows you to kind of bend this noodle around so you can get it out of the way. Uh, you, you, you see that in blueprints as well. But the other thing that it allows us to do is that we can now break, I'm gonna come over here and click on this little node and hold the Alt key down and click and break. And I've left this little reroute over here. So what I can now do is plug in all of these into this. We should have done this initially and we could have saved this step. Whoops, I don't wanna move it. I wanna grab that UV and plug that in. And so the nice thing is that if we change other things now, in between all of this functionality and where it branches out into each of the different maps, then we can just like break it right here as we've done and add more. We might want to do add, add some more later on, I can't remember, but we definitely want to do it now. So I'm gonna scooch this over here and so not have it, so we don't have to redo that every single time. We can just plug right back into this little reroute node uh, and, and that's gonna save us some, some uh, energy. We do need to search for a, a unique one here. We're gonna look for a rotator. We're gonna look for a custom rotator. So I just typed in ROT, there it is, custom rotator right there at the top. And this is just gonna allow us to then rotate from that. So I'm going to plug the output of this into that little break node right there. And then what we need to do is plug in the multiply. This guy here is going to go into the top UVs and that's just kind of giving us back uh, everything that we had before. It's just sort of passing through this. But what we want to do is say, well, what is the rotation angle that we want this to be? And then what is the center of this? So we're going to do a two vector. I don't think we've done one of these yet. Hold the two key down, the at sign two key on your keyboard and get a two vector on that. And the reason, you know, you could make this a parameter two if you wanted to, but yeah, I think it'd be kind of a rare instance where you'd want to do that. I'm going to go and plug this into the rotation center and sort of think about it. Like if we wanted to spin the texture around the center of the object, what should we put in here? Well, zero is gonna push us down into one corner, one is gonna push us up into the other corner, so what we wanna put in here is 0.5 into each of these. So, so if we put 0.5 uh, into both of these fields, again, you can always 
select the node here and type in over here as well. Sometimes that's easier to do than selecting these little boxes. Um, that's basically saying the pin that we are spinning our texture around on is right in the center of our object so that it's not rotating from a corner. That'll, hopefully that'll make sense in a second here. So that's got the rotation center down. That one's pretty easy. But what we want to do is say like, all right, well, what is the rotation angle? And that's something we're, we're going to want to change on the fly. So what do we want to do to, what should we plug into this to allow us to adjust it for every instance? That's a scalar parameter, right? So we're going to hold the S key down and click. And I still got the, the multiple S's. And I'm just going to call this rotation, R-O-T, rotation there. And then now I'm going to plug that value in there as well. And we want the default value to stay zero as well because we don't want it to be automatically rotated. So whatever you plug in here by default is what it's going to automatically be. So you got to really think about like what these are. I think that's given us the functionality we need. I'm going to save to make sure that it's updating. I'm going to come back into our first person map. We'll open up our test so I can just push this number around here and get it set up to the rotation they want. Notice that it is rotating right around the center of the object. That's what I was trying to explain when we were looking at the graph. It's right there, halfway down, halfway over, right in the center of the graph, as opposed to this would be zero and this would be one over here. So you could change that. You could make that a parameter as well. Maybe you want it to rotate it on a different spot. Usually you just want to kind of turn things at an angle or whatever. But we also have the ability that we had before to change the scale. We have the ability to now offset it on just one axis or both axes at the same time. And then of course we have the ability to swap out all these materials for some other material. So we've got some great functionality on here. So that's the main steps that we need to do. I'm gonna go ahead and do one more of these where I can do all the kind of the nitty gritty things that we can do to make your prime material as useful as possible.